All right, it started. Spring training has started. Here's a trivia question. Does anybody know who Clint Courtney is? I didn't either. If you're, not unsure, if you're not sure, don't let it bother you. He's not in Cooperstown. Don't worry about that. Clint was, uh, never came close to make it into the Hall of Fame. In fact, it's very doubtful that his pitcher even appeared on a bubblegum card. This guy wasn't a legend in his own time, not even in his own mind. He was only a memory maker for his family and a few diehard fans that were inspired by his tremendous fortitude. Clint played catcher for the Baltimore Orioles in 1950s. And during his career, he earned the nickname Scrap Iron, implying that he was hard, weathered, and tough. Old Scrap broke no records, only bones. He had little power or speed in, on, the, on the base path. And as for grace and style, he made it uh, the easiest play uh, was very difficult for him. But armed with the mitt and a mask, Scrap Iron never flinched from any challenge. Batters often missed the ball and it caught his shin. Foul balls tipped and nicked his elbows. Runner fiercely plowed into him, spikes first as he defended home plate. Though often doubled over in agony and flattened by the heap of dust, Clint, Clint Courtney never quit. Invariably, he'd slowly get up, shake the dust off of him, punch his mitt a couple of times, look at the pitcher and said, pitch it again! Scrapped and scarred and bruised and cluttered, clutching his arms in pain, he determined to continue. He remembered what looked like a POW with tape, splints, braces, and other kinds of paraphernalia that wounded his body. Many made fun of him, calling him a masochist, insane. Others remembered him as a true champion. It is evident from this story as I read it that Clint Courtney was a well-respected person. He might not have been a great baseball player, but he was a well-respected player on the team. And even though he didn't have a lot of baseball skills, he had just enough. It is quite possible that many would look at him and over his years as growing up as a little boy and say, You don't have any talent. You're never going to make it. What are you doing? But Clint kept fighting. Clint was determined that nothing was going to get in his way. So today, as we continue our series about journey and on, I want to cover a very important aspect of the journey. It's one that will take courage. It's one that is very important and it will help us arrive where God wants us to be. How many of you want to be where the Lord wants you to be? And it covers time. It covers determination. And of course, I'm talking about one word and it's called perseverance. Louise May Alcott said this, I am not afraid of storms, for I am learning how to sail my ship. Think about that. Josh Ship said this, Perseverance is stubbornness with a purpose. The great one, the Muhammad Ali said, what is, you can't read it very up there, very good, but let me read it. It says, I hated every minute of training, but I said, don't quit, suffer now, and live the rest of your life as a champion. Hebrews chapter 12, first three verses, let's look at them this morning. It says, Therefore, since we are surrounded by such a great cloud of witnesses, let us throw every, off everything that hinders and the sin that so easily entangles, and let us run with perseverance the race marked out for us, fixing our eyes on Jesus, the pioneer and perfecter of faith. For the joy set before him, he endured the cross, scorning its shame, and sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. Consider him who endured such opposition from sinners, so that you may not grow weary and lose heart. Let's pray. Father, I thank you for the opportunity this morning that we have to be in your presence, to be in your throne room, and to hear your word. I pray, Father, that you would take these things that you have laid upon my heart, and that, God, you would help me share them and deliver them in a way that, Father, will allow your spirit to move, that I pray that your name would be lifted up and glorified, and not mine. In Christ's name I pray. Amen. I got another cartoon here for you. Let's see if we can read this. Take a quick look at this picture. I want you to study the birds, the nest, and the background. One bird said, I've been sitting on it for days and days and nothing is happening. You got to look at the picture. Look at the picture. For those of you, that is not an egg. It is a golf ball. <laughs> 
How many of you have ever felt that your efforts have been in vain and that your journey is just seems like it's not ever getting anywhere? I've been there. And I think that we've all felt like this. And many of you right now may be feeling and wondering, where am I at and what is happening? It doesn't seem like much is taking place and where I'm going. I know that naturally sometimes in our life we might feel like certain times that we wonder what's going on. I remember, you know, when you turn to big four, oh, you know, you're wondering, what has my life been? What am I doing with my life? Has my life produced anything? Is my life been worth living? And as I just passed 50, I asked myself that very same question again. And what I'm doing matters. And the answer to that is yes. But I think it's natural for us to think that way sometimes and to ask those questions. But what I've been trying to get us to focus on in this series is not so much what has happened in your life at this point, but where are you right now in your journey and where is God taking you? And what lies ahead? And I'm also prayerful that you recognize that your journey has had points in its past that have come into your life for a specific reason for you to utilize those things that you have persevered through and that you have learned to use them from now on until the Lord takes you home. So there's some things this morning that I want us to look at, four things specifically, that deal with perseverance. So come along with me if you would for just a few minutes. Number one today is this. In this journey, we need to get rid of the extra. Get rid of the extra. Look at what Hebrews chapter 12 verse 1 says. Therefore, since we are surrounded by such a great cloud of witnesses, let us throw off everything that hinders and the sin that so easily entangles and let us run with perseverance the race marked out for us. How many of you have times have taken more on a vacation than you should have? I can see three hands. <laughs> Some of us, it's a difficult thing, right? Because when you take a trip, and especially if you're flying, you know, you only have so much that you can put in the suitcase before they charge you extra. Because why? They don't want to hurt their employees, and they don't want to lift that heavy weight. And so they say, if you're going to bring extra with you, it's going to cost you. Some of you have probably tried to keep the kitchen sink with you, haven't you? Now, my wife, she does a great job of packing... I think she overpacks. She'll tell you I overpack. But as I thought about this, I thought about people who actually go, you know, on journeys. I have a friend of mine who actually hiked Mount Everest looking for Noah's Ark. And they were gone for some time. How many of you know if he takes more than he needs in that backpack, it's going to hurt him? So we, as we go through this journey, anything that is unnecessary that we don't need or that we are hanging on to, the Scripture includes to us that we should get rid of it because if we don't, it will weigh us down and it will hinder us from getting where we need to be. But some of us like to have our cake and what? Eat it too. Right? You can never have too much of a good thing, some people say. So if I get one piece of cake, two can't be all that bad until you look in the mirror a couple of days later. Right? I understand that. And that means sometimes, listen to me, that means sometimes in our journey, we might actually have to say no, and sometimes we might actually have to say no to something that is actually good if it's not what we're supposed to be carrying. There are some things that, as the pastor of this church, that I need to be doing, and there's other things, and you've heard me say this, and I'm expecting that you step up in some areas so that I don't have to carry a burden that I'm not supposed to carry. I was hoping for a big amen there, actually. Listen, we're part of a team. You carry your load, and I'll carry mine. And God will move us forward. But if there's extra things that we're hanging on to in our life that we need to get rid of, we've got to be willing to get rid of it because if not, it's going to hurt us. Some people have back problems because they're trying to carry too much. And we must be willing to be honest with ourselves and God and ask Him to help us loose anything that will hinder us in His plan for us in our life, in our journey. And if we don't, then we must understand that... Whatever it is that we are not willing to let go, that it will drag us down. It will drag you down. It will hold you back a little bit. And I know that today is the Daytona 500, and I can tell you that those guys have been going through that car to find anything that they can get rid of on the way to that car so that car can be faster. 
The Olympics has taken place. They are doing everything they can to make sure that they have everything. If you watch these skiers, you, you know, you see they're wiping down their skis to make sure there's not any extra snow and ice on those skis. They're doing everything they can because they know that one one hundredth of a second could be the difference between a medal or no medal. The second thing I want to bring to our attention this morning is this. Is that in our journey, we are called to press on. Look at Hebrews chapter 12, verse 1 again. And it says, Therefore, since we are surrounded by such a great cloud of witnesses, let us throw off everything that hinders and the sin that so easily entangles, and let us run with perseverance, the race marked out for us. Say that word, perseverance. Now say it like you mean it. There you go. Philippians chapter 1, verse 6, one of my favorite passages of Scripture says, And for I am confident of this very thing, that he who began a good work in you will perfect it until the day of Jesus Christ. We are in a process, we are in a journey, and it will require time, determination, in order for us to make it to the end. And one cannot press, listen, one cannot press on and give up at the same time. Either you're moving forward or you're not. And one may take, listen, I understand that there may need to be a moment of rest in your life that needs to take place, but you can't stay there. You can't stay at rest. You must continue to move on in the process that the Lord has for you in your life, in the journey that He has for you. And we need to understand that God needs to have us press through because the enemy is out there battling us, and we will face trials, and we will face tribulations, but we have to have a heart and an attitude of, this will not stop us. And if we are not careful, we will allow the journey to seem like a mountain that is so unclimbable and so big. But let me tell you something, that is not the truth. Because there have been many mountains that have been climbed by people who said, I can do it, even though others said, you can't do it. Because they said, I will persevere. Thomas Foxwell Buxton said this, with ordinary talent, listen to this, with ordinary talent and extraordinary perseverance, all things are attainable. God takes the ordinary and can turn it into extraordinary. And sometimes the only difference, and I've heard this phrase before, and I can't remember who said it, so I apologize, but the only difference between ordinary and extraordinary is that little extra perseverance. Walter Elliott said this, Perseverance is not a long race, it is many short races, one after the other. How do you eat an elephant? How do you eat an elephant? One bite at a time. But some people look at the elephant and I say, I can't eat that elephant. But if you look at that one bite, you might be able to maintain that one bite. A marathon runner will never finish the race unless he is willing to, some would say, take the first step, right? But I'm here to tell you differently. A marathon runner will never finish the race unless he is willing to take the next step. Because all runners will run into a wall. It's all right to start the race. I can do it. But it's not the start that matters. It's the next step that makes the difference. I don't know who said this. I came across this. It was listed as anonymous. But if God gives you the desire and the talent slash ability, He will give you the power. And that's what I've been trying to help us understand in this series of Journeying On, that if God has said something to you, press on. He'll give you the strength. He'll give you the ability. Yes, you're going to have a difficult time here and there. But if God is for us, who can be against us? And there is no quit in God. And I don't believe there should be quit in His children. And that doesn't mean that we won't be redirected at times, but we should never quit on ourselves. Because let me tell you something, He's not going to quit on you. Because greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. And that we are more than conquerors. And no weapon formed against us shall prosper. And he will never call us to something that he will not equip us for. Third thing I have for you this morning is this. We do not have to go it alone. Look at what it says in Hebrews chapter two, 12, verses 2 and 3 here. It says, fixing our eyes on... 
Jesus, the pioneer and perfecter of faith, for the joy set before him, he endured the cross, scorning its shame, and sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. Consider him who endured such opposition from sinners, so that you may not grow weary and lose heart. And if you remember verse 1, it says that there is a great cloud of witnesses that are watching. Listen, we are not in this alone. Oh, I can see you guys don't understand that. We're not in this alone. Listen to me. The enemy wants you to think that you have to do it all by yourself. It's all on you. It's not. It's a cooperative effort. I hope you see that here when we get done with this. Who remembers the poem, The Footprints in the Sand? Anybody remember that? Basically, here's a story. It's a poem of a man who had fallen asleep and he was going through some things in his life and he was going through his journey in this dream in his life and... As he got to certain parts, as he was walking down the beach and reminiscing, he realized that there were two st- set of footprints at one place, and then there was only one and two. And, and he kind of got upset, and he was kind of looking at God and saying, well, what the heck, all the times that I was having a difficult time in my life, that's only there was only one footprint in the sand. Why did you leave me? And God rebuked him, and he says, I didn't leave you. It was at that point I was carrying you. Because we are not in this alone. Hebrews chapter 13 verse 5 says, Keep your lives free from the love of money and be content with what you have because God has said, Never will I leave you and never will I forsake you. Proverbs chapter 18 verse 24, One who has unreliable friends soon comes to ruin, but there is a friend who sticks closer than a brother. Listen, my friends, we are not in this journey alone. Look around the room. Look. Are you in this room by yourself? No. How many of you love the Lord? Raise the hand. How many of you want what God has for you? We're not alone. He's there for us, and we are here for one another. And when you think that you are alone on this journey, remember this. Please remember this. You are not alone. He is there, and we are here with you. God has called you to go on a journey, and God has called you to be here. God is calling this church on a journey, and we are to work together and support one another, to encourage one another. And I'm here to tell you, friends, we are not alone in this journey. You are not alone in the journey that that the Lord is calling you to. You have brothers and sisters that you can call upon, and we can pray with you, and we can encourage you, and we can help you. We are not alone. So when the enemy comes and he says, you can't do this, we can. We can do this. Because we are here together. The fourth thing that I have for you this morning is this. Is that victory will happen in the end. James chapter 1 verse 12 says, Blessed is the man who perseveres under trial, for once he has been approved, he will receive the crown of life, which the Lord has promised to those who loved him. Philippians 3.14, I press on toward the goal for the prize of the upward call of God in Christ Jesus. 1 Corinthians chapter 15 verse 58, Therefore, my beloved brethren, be steadfast, immovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, knowing that your toil is not in vain in the Lord. There is victory ahead. I'm going to say that again. There is victory ahead. There is something greater to live for and to fight for than rather just trying to exist. There are many who are counting on us as believers to let them know that they can too have hope. And when we live that week, we have hope. When we are excited about the fact that we have overcome the enemy and that the Lord is there with us, and we will one day fight. Listen, when we fight and we continue, we persevere, that one day you will receive your reward. And I believe the Lord will bless us here on earth as well to see some of the things that He wants us to see. So never give up on something that you really want. It is difficult to wait, but more... Listen, it is difficult to wait, but it is more difficult to regret. Thomas Edison said this, Many of life's failures are people who did not realize how close they were to success when they gave up. I may not 
be there yet, somebody wrote, but I am closer than I was yesterday. Can you say that? That you are on this journey, and even though you haven't arrived yet, maybe, you know, you're waiting to get to heaven, and maybe you haven't arrived yet, but can you say, I'm one day, I'm one step closer today, just like the marathon runner, I am one step closer to that finish line today. And I, it's not about what has happened in the past, it's about what my next step is gonna be, because there is a reward waiting for me, and I am gonna fight. And you know one of the things I love about the Olympics? It's not necessarily who wins. If you watch the Olympics, you'll see people that have finished well down the pack, that people are coming and applauding because they I finished the race. And that's the reward. 2 Thessalonians 3.13 says, But as for you, brethren, do not grow weary in doing good. Hebrews chapter 10, verse 36. For you have need of endurance that when you have done the will of God, you may receive what was promised. I'm not sure where this statement came from, but I read it in my preparation. It says, never let the odds keep you from doing what you know in your heart you are meant to do. The only way you're going to know what's in your heart and what you are meant to do is by you knowing who God is in your life and letting Him reveal that to you. And then press on. Press on. My conclusion's a little bit longer today, but some things I want to bring to your attention. I have another cartoon, and I hope this is what we can take to heart. Salesman walks into the guy's office. He says, you are lucky I already refused the five salesmen this morning. He says, I know, they were me. That's perseverance. That's saying, I'm not going to give up on what God has for me. I'm going to fight. I'm going to take this journey, and I'm going to take the next step. And it doesn't matter how many times I get knocked down, I'm going to get back up. Just like, just like Clint Courtney said, it doesn't matter if you knock me down at home plate, I'm going to get back up again. I'll bandage up my wounds. I'll heal myself. I'll fight back again. And never know, nobody knows who Courtney, Clint Courtney is. Everybody knows that God, right, if we have the opportunity to know him. And he says, I know who you are. We will never get to our destination if we never start. And to get where we want to go, we must get up and we must go. And this is not always easy, is it? But it is necessary. And once we start, listen, once you start that journey, once you say, yes, Lord, I will do what you want me to do. Yes, Lord, I will go where you want me to go. And I'm telling you right now, it's going to take some time and it's going to take perseverance. And you're going to need perseverance in your life and in this journey. But I want you to know, and I'm declaring to you today, you will not have to do it alone. And there is a reward at the end for those who are willing to fight. How many of you know that we would all love to be nice and fit like Rocky Balboa was in the Rocky movies, right? Did he just get like that one day? Did he just get up and say, oh, I'm going to do 15 sit-ups and 10 push-ups and bam, I'm ripped like a man. I know I'm a great specimen, but my wife just laughed at me. Listen, how did he get like that? How do you become that superhero we've been talking about? How do you get to be a specimen like that that's mighty and powerful? It's by you getting up today and reading your devotions and serving the Lord. It's by getting up the next day and reading your devotions and worshiping the Lord. It's by getting up the next day and reading your devotions and praying and saying, I will press on today. That's how you get like that. You just don't go to the gym at the Y one time and come out looking like that. It takes time after time after time after time after time. And how does that happen? It's one word. It's called perseverance. But I'm telling you, we can make it. I have a quote in my office by Mary Ann Radmacher. It says this, Courage doesn't always soar. Sometimes courage is the quiet voice at the end of the day saying, I will try again tomorrow. I will try again tomorrow. How many of you know that sometimes we just don't feel like we did everything we could do? I'm that way sometimes myself. But if we listen to the voice of the enemy, we'll stay there. 
If we choose to take this philosophy that says courage, perseverance, is that and I will get up and I will again try tomorrow. The people who make the end of the race are the ones who get up and take another step. And we don't have to do this on our own. We have people that when we fall down, and I love that one Olympic story of the man who fell down and his father come running out there onto the track and helped him finish the race. Because our father is there. And as brothers and sisters, we can be there to help one another and encourage one another to help them make it to the end. I know that some of you may think, Pastor, I don't have that kind of will. I don't, I don't have that kind of super will that I can do. And listen, I am not asking you to have a super will. I'm not asking you to have that. I'm asking you to consider that if you will have any kind of a will, what does the word say? That the faith of a mustard seed, just a little bit of will, just a little bit of willing to take the next step, that God will help us make it to the end of the journey. He will help us in our process. I love this one scene from, and I'm going to close with this today before we go to some time at the altar, but there's a scene in the movie called, in Facing the Giants called The Death Crawl. And if you have not seen this movie, this is probably one of the best parts of the entire movie. And you're going to see a coach challenge one of his players. And you're going to see what he does. And I'm asking you in the next five minutes that this clip shows, I'm asking you to look at this clip and see if you can find yourself anywhere. Because there are about eight different things that I could address in this video. But I'm asking you to consider if there's anything in here. So guys, if you'll play that video, I'd appreciate that. 